All right, let me welcome you to Village Parkway Baptist Church. For those who don't know, and this is my own members, I am Steve Branson, the pastor. Most of you don't recognize me dressed like this, so I've had a few questions about that this evening, who I was. But anyway, glad to have every one of you this evening. We have a great night planned for you, and we're looking forward to being able to share with you the Christmas story through all kinds of music and everything else. There are three parts to our show this evening. Uh, in a moment, our adult choir and orchestra will be presenting the first part. Second part will be our children. And I tell you what, this year they've been good every year, but this year they're, gonna, they're amazing. You're going to enjoy this. And then when they finish, we will present the Christmas story uh, in a very, very special way. And there is no break. It'll run about five hours. <laughs> no, no, but it'll be, it'll be a little bit. But if you need to slip out the bathrooms, you go out the back here, and they're to the right, my right, your left, as you, uh, behind you there. And uh, if they're full, uh, uh, the people doing our construction on Calabria have left a couple porta potties out there, so those are available also. <laughs> Next major thing, cell phones are okay. Uh, for those of you who are sacrificing greatly, the score is Philadelphia zero, Dallas zero. Now you can, hadn't started, that's why the score is that way. <laughs> but turn this to vibrate so that it will not ring. Uh, it might be a cue to the orchestra to go to a whole different song, and we don't want that to happen. I forgot this last night. We have DVDs. They're in the back. They're $5 to have a DVD of this. And then I also want to welcome the Internet. We have a live feed going on the Internet right now. We always have a good crowd watching from that, so it's good to have those of you who are watching on your computers at home. Also, first year ever, if you would like a Blu-ray. Now, if you don't know what Blu-ray is, don't ask. But if you know, we have it in Blu-ray this year, so you can do that also, but you have to sign up for that. Your program is in three parts. The yellow lets you know every person who is on this stage, behind the scene, taking some part throughout the whole program this evening. The green is for your critique afterwards, which we always welcome. When you leave, you can place it in the baskets out there. And then the very colorful one is the program itself. Let me open us with a word of prayer. I'm going to get out of here, and we'll begin our evening program, and I hope you enjoy as we share with you uh, the promise of Christmas. Join with me as we pray. Father, we do thank you for this evening, and I thank you for all who partake in this pageant this evening. I pray, Lord, that you would bless them with good voices, with the ability to play their instruments, the ability to memorize and remember all of their lines all the cues and all that takes place so that we can bring you honor, glory, and praise this night as we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. Watch over and guide us now, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.
of the season. And Mary didn't know when she had that baby in her hands, he was the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I celebrate everyone. Listen. One dark night on a quiet side, shepherds watch their sheep. Out of the blue, an angel brought news of hope, goodwill, and peace. In Bethlehem, there's been a baby born. His name is Jesus Christ the Lord. Emmanuel, the promised one, rejoice and sing your that little baby boy in the manger there came to save the world just like the prophet said. He's God in the flesh. So don't let the sun close or the cattle stall. Make it be as any lesson, Lord of all. you glad about it? Put your hands together. Ooh, the world should chase has lost its way Searching for the truth Trying to find peace of mind Through many points of view But only one can give a brand new exercise, sing a few carols with us. Why don't you stand while we do that? Here we go.
Good evening. We hope you've enjoyed the concert portion of our Christmas pageant. Coming up in just a few minutes will be our children's choir, and they will be presenting a brief Christmas musical called A Star is Born. Following the musical, we will present the full pageantry of Christ's birth events from his life and ministry here on earth. But now, a star is born. Places, everybody, places. It's showtime. Costume. I know, sir, but she wanted an updated look, more pizzazz for the leading lady. What? Look, ladies and gentlemen, I'm terribly sorry about the delay, but we're having a little trouble with our... Mr. Spielman, I'm ready for my close-up. This side, fellows, it's my camera friend's side. Paige, where did she come from? Where is Lisa? Lisa is supposed to be Mary. Someone told her to break a leg, and she did. I tried to help, sir. I called 1-800-BIG-STAR, and they said they had just the star we needed. What? That's right, sir. They said they had a leading lady who could even add her expertise. Listen, you behind the camera, my contract specifies I can only be shot with a soft lens. It captures my radiance, and Mr. Spillman, Paige Darling, signs our agreement. I do not follow animals or children, so can you say rewrite? Also, I need lots of spaghetti. My dear friend, Sophia Loren, taught me something valuable when she said, all I am, I am to spaghetti. Spaghetti? That's right, spaghetti. Oh, Mr. Spillman, I'm afraid I made a mess. What is it with her? I mean, no children and no manger scene at Christmas? And what's with the spaghetti? She is clearly overestimating the power of pasta. Paige, get her out here, please. You called? Yes, Sophia, regardless of your contract, the spotlight on this show is on our Savior Jesus. Now it's all about him humbling himself and being born on earth. The children and I have also learned that we must humble ourselves if we are to be used by God in this show or in life. Children, would you sing our, our warm-up song? They really get down on this one.
Sophia, the kids in the manger scene are staying in that spinal. The author would want it that way. Now look, I've been in a lot of really big shows, and I mean really big, and I've never heard of this. Humble yourself, get down, and then you're up thing. Miss Sophia, sing him a seesaw. One side's down, and that's the human side. When we humble ourselves and realize that we need God, it doesn't go real high, and we can do anything God wants us to do. Miss Sophia, can, can you act humble? <laughs> Of course I can act humble. I can fake anything. You want humility? Well, then show me the money. Well, you can't fake humility. God knows our hearts. Great job. Okay, now the supporting cast and crew are ready for our Christmas taping. How about you, Sophia? Mr. Spillman, if you want Mary, I'll give you Mary. Just give me the necessary information that I'll need to develop my character. Now, was she naive, glamorous, royalty? Mary was a young, humble, and righteous girl who... Not the humble thing again. Mary was chosen to be the leading lady because she knew her God and followed his ways. Mr. Spillman, let's get going and let me act. Whoa, 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 right there. Sophia, we won't need you to play Mary after all. What? Now, I'm sorry. You just don't have the right, the right attitude to play Mary. Never, never in all my shows. You know, we have a contract. I am to be a star. We think Sophia make a great star. Oh, that's perfect. Sophia, why don't you go down to wardrobe with these two lovely young ladies, and they'll fix you right up. Well, fine. Now remember, girls, I need to wear something bright and glittery. <laughs> Wise men, we're ready for your number. <laughs> Sophia suggested we change the song up a little, sort of ham it up. Sophia. And we thought about it, Mr. Spielman, and we think she's right. We want our time center stage too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Boys, you are the three wise men. Don't be fooled. We're going to do it the way it was written in the Bible. Now let's review. The wise men searched for the star, and when they found it, they were... Overjoyed. Right. They were overjoyed to find the star, which would lead them to the Christ child. And next they... Worshipped him. Yes, they got, yes, they got down and they worshipped the baby for who he was, their savior, out of joy and as part of their worship. Then they presented their gifts. Oh, Mrs. Spielman, I ruined our Christmas taping. I got so fear and she was all wrong. Now the wise men, all these people have come to watch, and now they won't hear. Paige, the wise men are fine. They finally wised up. And as for Sophia, well, Herod couldn't stop God's plan, and she won't stop us. You were trying to help, and your heart was in the right place. And that's what God sees. Paige, will you be Mary? But I'm just a backstage... You know the part, and you've been a faithful stagehand, so I know that I can put you in charge of more. What do you say? Well... I am the Lord's servant. If this is how I can serve, of course I will. Yay. You know what, Paige? Your answer? That's just what Mary said when the angel came down and told her she was going to give birth to Jesus. 
Yes, that's right. Mary knew that God would see her through, and Paige, she, he will see you through too. Now I proudly present to you our Christmas special, A Star is Born. beaming straight down to earth, leading the shepherds and wise men to a small village called Bethlehem. There they found Mary and Joseph in a humble stable because there was no room for them in the inn. The baby Jesus was wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. It was an ordinary town until our Savior was born there. His light can change our lives into something extraordinary, even today. Just follow the star. This is the love story of all time. God himself the of would love us so much that he would send his son Jesus down to earth to save his people from their sins.
It did not take long for the word to get out. The shepherds heard about his birth. They heard it from the angels and they hurriedly made their way to the stable. A newborn babe could not be hid in this town. The ladies at the inn were keenly aware that a baby was being born that night. The men who had settled in for the evening in Bethlehem were aroused to all the commotion that was going on. Soon children and townspeople all took their lamps and lanterns and they made their way to see the new guest in this hotel manger. The stars were brightly shining that night. Heaven was putting on quite a display of radiant beauty. But there was one star that was obvious in its brightness. It had a beam like a heavenly spotlight. It was shining on that animal stall that night. It was mysterious in its beauty and could, none could deny its beckoning beam. The little Mother Mary looked serene and captivated by the little child that was now in her arms. She hardly seemed to notice that a crowd had begun to gather. One could only imagine what was going through her heart and mind at that moment.
Shepherds began to tell everyone what the angels had told them. And the words were, For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Messiah, the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you that you will find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Some of the men began to whisper, Could this be the Messiah, the promised one who will deliver us? Could this be the Savior who was born according to the very prophecies of this town. Some wondered, but others began to say, God be praised. The little children, they didn't hesitate to believe that God so loved them that he sent his only son from heaven's glory to this little manger just for them. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem, in the days of Herod the king, wise men came from the east, asking, where is he who is to be born king of the Jews? 
We have seen his star in the rising in the east, and we've come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was greatly disturbed and troubled by all that he had heard. In fact, all of Jerusalem joined with him, being troubled by the words from the wise men. So he called together the chief priests and the scribes and asked them, Where is this Christ child to be born? And they replied, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it was written by the prophets. Herod said to the wise men, I want you to go and make careful search for this child, and when you have found him, bring word to me that I may come and worship him. When they left, behold, the star began to lead them as they went to Bethlehem, till the star stood over the child. And when they saw the star, they were filled with ecstatic joy, and they proceeded to worship the child.
at the end of eight days when the baby was to be circumcised. He was called Jesus, the name that had been given him by the angel before he was born. When the time of dedication came according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem according to the law of the Lord. And it was written in the law, every firstborn male that opens the womb shall be set apart and dedicated, called holy to the Lord. And a sacrifice according to the law was just a simple sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now, there was in Jerusalem a man whose name was Simeon. He was a righteous man, a devout man. He was looking for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been divinely revealed to him that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. Being prompted by the Holy Spirit, he came to the temple. And when the parents brought little Jesus to do for him what was customary according to law, Simeon took Jesus and he praised and thanked God and he said, And now, Lord, you're releasing your servant to depart and leave this world in peace. And it's according to your word. With my own eyes, I have seen your salvation, which you have ordained. And you prepared before all in the presence of all the people. He is a light for the revelation to the Gentiles. And he will bring glory and praise and honor to your people, Israel. Then Simeon said to Mary, Behold, this child is appointed and destined for the fall and the rise of many. And he'll be a sign that will be spoken against. And a sword will pierce through your own soul also. Joseph and Mary, they marveled at these words. When they'd done all that was required of them by the law, they went back into Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. And there in Nazareth, the child grew. He became strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Many years later, Jesus is now 30 years of age. He begins his public ministry. He is baptized by John the Baptist in the River Jordan. And the Spirit of the Lord came down upon him. And God spoke from the heavens and said, You are my son, my beloved. In you I am well pleased, and I find delight. After the baptism, he was led into the desert where he was tempted by Satan. And having overcome all the temptations that Satan could throw at him, Jesus finally rested and he ate. As he left that, he began his ministry. And before long, began to choose the 12 men who would walk with him. But along the way, one day, as he went to his town of Nazareth, as was his custom, they handed him a scroll of Isaiah. And in the synagogue where he was raised, he began to read these words. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to announce release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to deliver those who are oppressed, and to proclaim the accepted and the acceptable day of the Lord. And Jesus looked at those in the synagogue that day and he said to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled while you are present and listening. It was a defining moment. Jesus had publicly declared himself that he was a fulfillment of Isaiah's prophecy. He was saying to the people there who had seen him raised there, I am the Messiah that you have been waiting and looking for. The crowds over the days that followed would follow him. They knew that he was different. He spoke with authority. And yet he revealed love and compassion to them in so many ways. On one occasion, 
over 5,000 followed him to a very remote location. As the day proceeded, there was no food to be able to feed them all. Simon, one of the disciples, said, There's a lad here, and he has five loaves, and he has two fishes. But what is that among so many? Jesus had everyone sit down. He took the loaves and the fishes, and he began to give thanks. He broke them into small pieces, and he gave it to the disciples to distribute among the people. When they had eaten and were filled, Jesus asked that the rest be gathered, that none would be lost. They collected 12 basketfuls that day. It was truly a miracle of God. Many believed on him as a Messiah, and they rejoiced, and they were excited. After this, many men spoke well of him, and the crowds began to follow him everywhere that he went. He did miracles of healing. He raised people from the dead. Most of the people were awed and amazed by him. But this was not true of the priest and the religious leaders of that day. They became jealous of him, and their hatred of him grew. Finally, they plotted to kill him. Jesus knew that this would happen. It was in God's plan that he willingly accepted. He was the Lamb of God to be sacrificed for the sins of the world. They took him through a mock trial filled with lies and deceit. They mocked him. They beat him. They spit on him. Frenzy of mob violence. It was a terrible scene.
Many years ago, there was a young man by the name of Nicholas. Nicholas was born into a very wealthy family. Had everything you could ever ask for as a young child provided for him. But one of the great tragedies that befell on Nicholas' life early was that a plague ran through the village in which he lived in what would be known as Turkey today. He was a Grecian young boy but lived in Turkey. Both of his parents died from the plague and he had no family to take care of him. Later, an uncle took him in and raised him. This young boy eventually came to the point that he took seriously the story you've heard tonight, and as a young man came to the place that he had made a decision that he would follow Jesus Christ. He confessed that he was alive, rose from the dead, and believed that he was Lord. amazing thing about this young man who had much go wrong in his young life was he became one of the most generous men that anyone had ever known. Out of the wealth which his family had left him as the only child that they had ever had before their death, he began to use that money to help the poor, the sick, and the needy. In fact, he became very well known within towns which he lived in there in Turkey. Along the way, his generosity led him even more to a study of the Word of God, and before long they asked him, become pastor of the little church within the community in which he lived. And he began to preach the word of God. As he preached the great truths of God's word, he also did it at a time when Roman persecution was intense upon the world during those days. In fact, the matter in this particular century, which would be the fourth century, the jails were filled with preachers, not murderers and thieves, 
There literally was no room in the jail for those who broke the law. It's a true fact. All throughout that area from Rome to Turkey was filled with men like Nicholas. They were persecuted. They were threatened. Some of them were executed. They were said to deny the very truth of who Christ is. And yet Nicholas would never do that. After years, he finally won his release. Paid a price physically because of all that he'd been through. But this young man now becoming a very great man began to have a profound influence upon all that he came in contact with. He later was at what was called the Council of Nicaea, the Nicaean Creed, which probably many of you at one time or the other have said that creed in a worship service somewhere. He helped to author that with the other men that were involved with him. He began to have one of the great respect of all throughout that area and became one of the great men. Now some of you have not ever heard the story of Nicholas, the pastor of this particular little town in Turkey. But let me tell another story about him where you might have an idea who this young man, who later became a great man, was. There was a poor man that lived within his town. Had three daughters. Back in that day, for your daughters to get married, the, the father had to have a dowry. The greater the dowry, the more opportunity to be able to give your daughter a, a good life. If you had no dowry in which to give, then you sold your daughters into slavery. This man had three daughters and no money, nothing that he could do. Nicholas, very much aware in this particular community of what was going on with the family, quietly one night slipped in with a bag of gold, pushed it through the window for daughter one. Story has it, day two came back, put another one in. Day three, dad waited up at night to see who was coming to their house. Depending on the story of which we read, he may have encountered Nicholas outside, and he may not have. But on the third time when he pitched it, it landed in a stocking. I'm not making this up. The stockings literally were hung in by the fire to dry that night. The coins fell in through the window into that particular stocking. Who am I talking about? St. Nick. Nicholas. We use in America, started tradition in the 1820s and switched it to a jolly old man with a fat little belly with elves and everything else. I want to remind you tonight, though, that the story of St. Nick is a true story. A man who had a deep and abiding faith in Jesus Christ, who took the difficulties of life and went forward, and instead of living with the greed of all that the world had to offer, literally gave it all away. He literally gave it all away to help. Through the sufferings of walking with Christ, he was willing to stand firm, even the most difficult of days. Why? Because his faith was so real. And he later became to have a profound impact that all of us to this day still experience when we confess the great truths of Christianity, for he was one of the ones who stood firm at a very critical moment within life. What made him a great man? The story you heard tonight, trust and faith in Jesus Christ alone. We are here tonight to let you know that the story of Christmas is true. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. My prayer is this night that no one would leave this worship center at Village Parkway without knowing Jesus is their Lord and Savior. I'm going to give you just an opportunity. We're not going to do any invitations, nothing like that. But I want to lead in a moment in a word of prayer. And if you, the story for tonight may have made sense for the first time ever. It happened to me when I was 20 years of age. I could have cared less about church. You couldn't get me to walk through a door. But a friend one night told me the story you heard tonight, and I got mad at him, told him, shut up. His name's Ed Wright. I am grateful to this day for Ed. He lives in Alabama. We stay in touch even to this day. But the next night I was sitting there, and you know what? It made sense. On August 13th, 1974, I met Jesus Christ. Greatest thing ever happened within my life. If tonight, maybe the first time that's happened to you, I want you to join me in a moment when I pray. 
The words I'm going to say are not magical words. They're just simple truths. It's you addressing them to the Father. Those of you here today that know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you give praise and thanks because there's no greater time than Christmas time to celebrate his birth. Join with me as we pray. Father, we thank you for this night and the privilege and honor you've given us to be able to hear again the great story of Jesus. And if tonight you don't know him, pray with me. Father in heaven, I come humbly into your presence. Tonight it makes sense. Tonight I confess Jesus is Lord. And I believe in my heart that you have raised him from the dead. Father, forgive me. Give me life. Help me to understand and help me now to walk with you. Father, thank you for all that you're doing in the lives of all who are here this day. Bless us this night as we go home. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us this evening at Village Parkway Baptist Church. It has been an honor and privilege to bring our pageant to you tonight, and we hope you've enjoyed it. Now, I need to walk through a few things as we dismiss this evening. I want to first do two things I did not do last night. There takes much to make this happen. It just, I think we got together Thursday for the first time and started all of this. No, that's not how it worked. It's been going on since August. But up here, we have a bunch of people sitting around this table up here. If they walked out in the middle of this or went home, we'd be sunk. They do the sound, the lights, they do the communication, everything we need. And I forgot to mention them last night, so give them a hand for all that they do. not an easy job. They cannot look away one second for anything. They have to stay focused the, all, this entire time. And we have to get our cues so perfectly right or then it throws them completely off. So great job, guys. We appreciate all that they do. Second thing I want to do, Marla Tews, would you stand up? Marla leads our children's choir. Thank you. I tell you what, I'll put them up against anybody. That was a superb job. I mean, great job. Thank you. Of course, my grandkid was in it too, so that may have helped also at that point. But anyway, thank you. We greatly appreciate that. I think it's a 34-piece orchestra. Many from our church, many are guests working with us this week. Thank you to every one of you again. And then give a hand for our choir as they led us this evening. I got it wrong last night. I said this was Malcolm's 82nd pageant. It's his 83rd. No. <laughs> Malcolm Granger, would you stand? Thank you again for leading us. I understand this evening that we have several from Castle Hills. We just want to thank you for training him so that he could come and work with us here at Village Parkway. We are grateful for that very, very, very much. All right, Malcolm is showing me the green sheets. He wants your critiques. He doesn't want anything negative. No, whatever you need to tell him about the pageant to help us do it better. Uh, he's planning another two or three hundred of these. So anyway, you, you do that. Okay, backstage crew. We're Art and, ba Art and Barbara Beatty. They lead our backstage crew. All right, what, what have I forgotten? Huh? King's, okay, they, they want me to recognize every single person. The King's Court, that's quite an amazing thing. Thank you to all who are in the King's Court. <laughs> Okay, final words, and we'll go home. Uh, the DVDs are out in the back back there. They're $5. You can get one. If you'd like to have a Blu-ray, we also have that, but you'll have to order those to the office, or I think there's a sign-up sheet out there. I'm taking it tonight as we get ready to leave. The parking lots will be completely filled. As you exit onto Village Parkway, they have divided that exit into two ways. If you're in the left lane, you have to turn left. I know some of you are going to want to go right. Go into the neighborhood, turn around and come back. You will not be able to make a left turn. Should be a policeman there to help encourage you as you do that. The rest can turn right. 
We have a new entrance out on Calabria. Enjoy that one because we've desperately needed it. And so I just want to thank all of you for coming. Let's stand. I'll close us in prayer. And you have a great Christmas season. And may the Lord bless you and all that you do. Join with me as we pray. Father, we do thank you for this night and for the privilege and honor you've given us to be able to come and celebrate the story of the birth of your son, the Lord Jesus, as he came to this earth to bring us life. Thank you, Father, for all that you've done this evening. Be with us as we go home is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. And you're dismissed.